Hello, good morning, guys. Good morning. I'm going to switch the camera and show you guys how beautiful it is today. Look outside. It's full of sunshine. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, the Okay, guys, today I'm going to show you guys how I make this um, toffee cookies for Christmas. So, let me jump on to this recipe. In fact, I did make this earlier on. It's in the link. I'm going to include that later on. Uh, and the video, again, I like to modify a little bit because <clears throat> sometimes, you know, you really have to have a feel. I always emphasize on, like, you know, you really have to feel the dome. And uh, let me just quickly go through what are the ingredients we need. We need butter. These are actually butter. I have melt them, over melt them in the microwave. So I try not to melt them like I did. Uh, and then I try to stop them. So try not to have all this uh, like oil base. It's supposed to be just soft. So if possible, take out the butter in advance and just put them in the air and just let them soften by itself. But because uh, I didn't do that, so I used a microwave for the shortcut. So this is not a good way, but we'll see how it turns out. And also flour. I have about 5 deciliter of flour. I'm making between 100 to 120 cookies. So this is actually a portion of 5. So don't worry, I'm going to include the right portion per 30 cookies into uh, the video description. So you get that right recipe and also sugar and also uh, this is vanilla sugar and uh, baking powder and also syrup hi hi and this are uh, brown syrup you can use white syrup if you have at home but i'm using brown because i like uh, the color of the cookies turning out so it's uh, slightly darker and also the most important is the ginger the ginger uh, some people in my past recipes i have a video i use fresh ginger which is really good but i just realized that you can also use powdered ginger which is more convenient so this is about five teaspoon of powdered ginger and that's it it's really simple let me just count count how many ingredients you need actually one two three four five six six ingredients really easy right so let's jump on to making it uh, i have reserved two eggs because like i say i'm just going to nag again uh not nagging but uh, to feel it it's really important to feel it sometimes we we don't we cannot uh, deny the fact that sometimes recipe isn't that accurate uh, i've tried many recipe not every recipe is successful so again depending on the country that you are living in and of course syrup i think is not so difficult to get powdered ginger might be a problem for some countries some country don't even have fresh ginger so powdered ginger can be a good alternative so you see once i mix them it's much more easier so i'm going to put them into the mixture This is about 500 gram of uh, butter. Oh, so uh, haven't haven't had my breakfast yet, so a little bit clumsy today. Uh, I have this problem with uh, breakfast uh, when I eat too early. I don't feel well, my stomach upset. And if I eat too late, uh, usually in the morning I just have a cup of tea. So this is my breakfast, my cup of tea. Just let me wipe this away. And then I'm gonna bring you guys closer so you can take a look on the close-up format. 
And then I'm going to add in the sugar, which is about, it's quite a lot of sugar, I should admit. Uh, and then, you know, you just want to whisk this first. Until they are really really puffy or light just enough and then I'm going to mix the ginger powder followed by the baking flour and the vanilla sugar and also the very important the syrup This will give the cookies a very nice golden brown color. Uh, you can also use white one, but then the white one, the color is not as nice. So for me, I prefer to use the, a brown uh, a dark syrup. You, uh, the word uh, cola means uh, next. Also, it's another, but it means burnt sugar. So... Uh, with brown sugar, you have this burn sugar effect. Okay, let me just put everything together. And then the flour. Let me see if I can put it back this way. And then you just need to feel it. Yeah. <clears throat> Move it to the side. Okay. So let's start very, very slowly. Okay. Because you, if you start very quickly, then you know you will have like a, uh, a rain of flour. Let me just start this way. see I, I see that this is, dough is getting really nice you don't have to put egg if you are able to get this consistency yeah but if your flour is really really dry you know it's probably kneading you can see on the bottom if there are flour on the bottom if there are flour on the bottom you can add half an egg just to blend everything together so I'm just going to increase the heat, the speed a bit. simple right so let me just show you what I'm gonna do here okay. Uh, okay 
Okay, we need a tray. Uh, put the tray with uh, baking paper. So we're going to roll this out. So you need to have a rolling pin. Uh, let me just see if I can just hold on to this direction so you can see better. So you need the rolling pin. I'm going to put this here so you can see what I'm what, what I'm doing here. Let me just remove some of the sugar from the table. And then you need a rolling pin. And get hold of a bit of flour in case it gets stuck. my powder dusting machine <laughs> so I like to use this one to dust my table it's much easier if you want to roll out the dough you want to have an evenly flat surface okay and then take this out of this quite a lot of cookies I hope I can make up to 120 cookies in this patch uh, and also you can make a gluten-free one so I will be making some gluten-free uh, cookies also if you guys are interested This can be a challenge. Ooh. Ooh. Let me just remove this. So clean. And then shake this out. I usually like to use a spoon or a knife. Okay, into the machine and then just put everything together into like a small pastry dough. And then we need to divide this into a few portions because remember how many portions I do. I actually make five, so I'm going to divide this into five. Let me see, uh, the center will be here approximately. 
then this is one portion about one portion like this two three that's how I divide one and of course if you have a way you can do that but uh, I don't think so I will do that I just have to feel it like a snowball size two and then you feel oh I think this is slightly smaller and this is slightly bigger just donate some over and then feel for yourself the size okay this is okay this is okay this is still a bit too small so I think this is a bit too big I'm gonna donate over a bit still a bit too big yeah feel it this is still a bit too big I'm going to donate some over yep and now yeah so five equal portion so, one of them you can make about 30 cookies so times five is supposed to be around 150 right so usually I like to roll them onto this pan like this. So I just just a bit on the flap, a bit, not too much, and then I'm gonna take this out and just and then usually I like to take the the paper out so it's easier to roll on the table so shape them oh before I forgot let me just on the oven uh, to about 175 175 on both sides so you can make two of this at the time at the same time uh, I like to use my knife to shape them first. so I get this really nice even rectangle Yeah, and then I use a rolling pin to just even them out a little bit first you see it's a bit out of shape so this is a very very thin biscuit you can keep them for a very long time in the refrigerator or in the room temperature room temperature you could last about a week but in the fridge you can keep them like for months so this is really really good if you are preparing a, a christmas uh, a gathering and you don't have time to bake so i'm going to roll this out slowly bit by bit and then turn this Turn this and then just roll it elongated. You see the shape again is not so nice, yeah? Don't worry, we're going to fix that. So you want this to be quite thin. You see, you're losing some part because I forgot to flour this. But don't worry, if you have the same problem, just patch them. Okay, it's, as you can see, this part is like overgrown, right? So you don't want this. You're going to cut this away. And you're going to um, try and get the right even here. There's a hole here. 
So I'll just patch down this hole here. So uh, this cookies, it will uh, somehow expand again in the, the oven when you bake them. So usually I like to just make sure that the corners, especially the corners, are uh, filled. So I get to, I get this really nice rectangular. That there is uh, some unevenness still, uh, especially this part is a bit thicker. So well, how are we going to solve that, right? So take the rolling pin and roll it inward. Oh, I forgot to put my powder. Remember, put powder, the flour, and just roll them inward. Yeah, make sure it's uh, really nice. So you're going to cut this cookies into strips later on. You want to make sure uh, it is at least 0 0.3 mm thick on all sides and feel it with your hand and your finger. Uh, your, with your finger, I mean, and then just see, okay, this part is a bit thicker, right? So you're going to push everything to this side a little bit. So, there you go. It's not that difficult, isn't it? Just even this up. So you should be able to get about... Uh, between, I have no ruler here. Let me just see if I can find the ruler. I have a ruler so that I can measure. <laughs> yeah, here. Here's my ruler. I like to measure my cake. My, uh, so it's about 26, 30, 35. About 35. About 26. If you can roll it out to 30, it will even be better. Mm, maybe this is a slightly thinner. So I think I'm quite happy with this, this thickness. I just have to make sure that they are being so let me just put this over to the pan gently move them to the pan so what you want to do is you want to cut them in uh, later when they are done uh, and then you have to cut them quite quickly when they are hot so and then you mustn't be afraid of being burned because there are chances that you can burn yourself really badly if you don't know how to do this. So I'm going to just start off with the first one, but the other is not that hot yet. So I'm going to do another one and see if this works better. So again, I think it's quite a lot of oil in the, the fat in this dough you don't really need to uh, you don't really need to add flour i think so again i'm just going to do two and then i'm going to put them in the oven so that you know i can bake them and i'm going to continue so while i continue with the rest of the dough you can uh, see how i manage the finished dough so I'm just going to do one more and see if this is as thick. Yes. 
Okay, is this in the center? Yep. You see, I didn't really shape up like uh, earlier on, so it's a bit oval, more than a rectangle now, but don't worry, we're going to fix it. I just want to even this up first, add a little bit of pressure. Thickness is okay. This is a bit too out. I'm going to use that corner to fix this corner. And then this is a bit too much. And I'm going to use that corner to fix this corner. And use this corner to fix this corner. Can you see? Ah, oh, maybe not. Okay. I'm using, I'm cutting to fix corners, so <laughs> you must be wondering what am I doing? Okay. Uh, I want to use a bit to fix this corner because this corner is a bit thin and then I'm going to use a bit more to fix on this corner too much okay and then Just smoothen it a bit. Make sure you make them join together. And last minute, use this thing to just form them so that you get this nice edge. Even up again. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, a, a playlist for Christmas uh, and I hope you can check that out. I'm going to include that in the link and I'm going to gently move this into my baking form. And I'm going to bake this right away and it will take about 10 minutes to bake them and you have to make sure you keep an eye on it so that you will not burn okay if you like you can pan slug we call that but if you don't it's okay uh, what I like to do is uh, I like to use a fork use a fork and then you just 
do like this gently. Because it will crack for sure. Mm. Quite a lot of pepper, a lot of um, thing I fair. I mean, the ginger. I'm in love with this cookie because uh, it's really simple to make. And it's very tasty, very tasty. And if you want uh, to add even more sweeter, you can actually make this cola coffee candy um, gel, and you just pour them over and let them harden and cut them. Uh, it can be really nice, but uh, I think this is enough. Uh, I don't like too sweet. So like this, and then this is all ready to be baked. So the oven is ready. I'm going to put the, the first batch in the oven. And then follow my the second batch. Okay. So I have a few uh, Christmas recipe uh, in my playlist. Go around and scroll down and check if I didn't if you didn't find it. Uh, I'm going to include that in the video description. So uh, there I share with you guys a few of my previous Christmas cookie and uh, some chicken turkey. If I'm not wrong, I have one on turkey, and I think I have a few Christmas cookie that I made earlier on. I was thinking about the Christmas uh, food that I'm going to make this year. So I'm going to make a rib, uh, a pork rib with um, glug. It's a wine. Uh, it's a sweet wine. We eat, we drink that wine uh, quite often during the Christmas here in Europe. So it's a spice, it's a herbs wine. It's really good so I'm going to cook that ribs in the in this uh, what do you call that the this wine overnight uh, I, I I'm gonna really see if I can find a really good recipe so I, I really like this ribs because uh, it has the flavors of this wine and there's something really magical about this wine is uh, it's to some people especially me I I personally find that this wine is far too sweet for for drinking because I don't like sweet stuff yeah so I think it's perfect if you're gonna make them into ribs and even pork chop so I'm going to try and make that and then also the traditional mm, Swedish buffet uh, always, always, always include uh, Swedish meatballs. I'm not so sure if I want to make them or I'm going to buy them depending on my schedule. Because this year there is really a lot of people are coming to um, dine with us. So uh, I'm really start to worry now because <laughs> uh, I never make food for so many people my whole life. <laughs> Which is really really exciting. It's a really big challenge for me. Uh, I think we are uh, we sold off uh, about two hundred tickets. So which means to say I'm going to be feeding two hundred people. Yeah. So this is going to be really really exciting for me. And I hope you can uh, follow me through this journey by live streaming. 
Uh, today I'm live streaming this because I thought this might be a good video for some of you guys who are looking for Christmas ideas. Uh, okay, so I'm going to fix corner now again. <laughs> A lot of people always say, oh, Christmas is so damn boring, right? You eat the same food. Oh, I think I would like to keep the, because this place is a historical place. So I will be trying some really Asian uh, recipes on this buffet dinner. Uh, because I'm always interested in historical food. And you know, during the Viking time. So I... I am doing research now, uh, looking for some unique, interesting Viking food that uh, I'm going to be serving on the, our Christmas buffet table. And it will be exciting to see what I have come up with. As Asian, can you imagine I'm an Asian and, and, and I think I feel so honored, like the sweet people, they think that my cannibula, my cinnamon roll bun is one of the most delicious. And my boss always uh, teased me and he said, oh, Esti, you always lied to me. You said that you can't bake, but actually you can bake. It's not that I'm lying to him or what, it's just that I felt like, you know, we should be humble. We shouldn't say that we can everything and then at the end we can't, right? It's, it's just going to be just so disappointing for people. So for me, my type, my style is I don't like to put on pressure on myself. I just want to do and work along with my interests. So that's how I work. So I'm going to check the cake cookies now. And I'm going to put this batch also. Making sure that I don't burn this. Okay. I'm just going to check this. Oops. Okay. Let's check. Oh, it's not done. It's not really done yet. I think it's a bit too hot in the top one. In the second one. So I'm going to use my fork again. So I'm doing able to do live streaming only at this time when I'm working at my job place. So if you guys are unable to watch my live and catch me live chatting with me, it's fine. To, I saw that a lot of people watch my live streaming after. Now it's after the morning, yeah. So it's understandable because most of you are working, right? And probably most of you guys who are in the United States are probably sleeping now, so I can understand. So another patch, and then I think I'm going to get this out soon. Just one more minute. Okay, before I roll this out, I'm going to take my cookies out and show you how I cut them. Okay, my underlick, we call it the underlick. Uh, okay, now let me get my knife and let me just take off this one. And I'm going to get this out, put them on the table, yes, and you have to very, very quick, yeah, have to be really, really quick here, I'm going to put this other batch here, and I'm going to let this one lower the temperature a little bit while I cut this one, so usually, I like to cut them with this one. Let me just remove the dough. I like to cut with this one. 
So while they are hot, so approximately, I like to cut them the three portion. One, two, two, okay, one, like that. You have to cut them quite quickly because they are soft now. And then I cut them like this. One. This is really good if you are dipping into teas. Uh, coffee. I prefer tea. Tea is much better. Tea is. Uh, uh, did you know that uh, according to the research, uh, the best dipping um, beverage for cookies is actually tea instead of coffee. In Sweden, they like to dip everything in coffee, but I personally feel like tea is better. How many of you agree? I think I have one corner that is too small, but anyway, it's okay. I'm going to move this one over here so that I can cut the other one, which is ready. So, I'm going to cut this one before it's hard. Alright, so again, the same principle, just divide this into three. One, two, three. You have to re be quite fast, yeah. Cannot be slow, slow, like oh, people, that huh? cannot be that slow. You have to be quite fast so that it will not be hardened. It's quite difficult to cut when it's hard. So, one, two. And if you like, you can move your knife a bit like this, so that, you know, you split them uh, like more. Okay, so I'm going to continue baking. I hope you guys can um, wait for me a while. I'm going to just cut this one last one and then I'm going to get a taste, a uh, close up on the look. Okay, that's it. Just make sure that the, you, you literally cut them and they're all separated. Then you will not have to break them later on. So I'm going to just continue to do the other one. I didn't think that I break this one enough. So just make sure that I break them before it's too late. Okay. I think they are quite... Okay. So the longer you keep them cool down properly, then they will be very very hot. So you can make a cola or you can make whatever candies and just sprinkle them on top. You see it's already started to be crispy.
smells so good in the kitchen. Okay. Okay. Yes. Right. This is how it looks like. I'm showing you just a corner. You see, when you break them like this, it's a bit um, soft now because it's so hot. So when it's dry, it can be really hot. So this is really good. You can dip them in the tea and you can drink them. You can eat them with the tea. So I'm going to have this one in my tea. Mmm. Can you hear? Mmm. Really good. Mmm. Cannot stop eating. So, thank you for watching. See you in my next live streaming. Don't forget to subscribe and press the yellow button, okay? See you, bye-bye.